Welcome back to the Coach Mac Show, the homecoming edition. Defeated Wilcox County Friday night on homecoming 22, 22-0. Coach, I'm going to do a little bit of bragging on you, if you don't mind, from the GHSA Daily. Our own Coach Rich McCorder voted the number one best active coach. Well, not voted, you did it. Career value, active coach, career value, 14th best active coach per season value, and the number 10 best coach all time in the state of Georgia. Congratulations, Coach. Well, that's, you know, it's, it's an honor when other, somebody else says things about you. But, uh, you know, it comes back to you having great players and great coaches, great support. And, and uh, we just look at the facilities we've been able to build here with the weight room and, and our stadium and, and this field house. And, and, last, uh, and last Friday night when we had guys like the 2004 state championship guys come back, for their 10-year reunion, when you've had players like that, and I've had great, great assistant coaches that I've had, you know, that's that's why that is, it really is. I mean, I, I, I've always thought coaching to a point, especially head coaching, can be overrated uh, to a point simply because if you have great players, you have great assistant coaches, and you've got support, then uh, you have a chance to for things to go well, and that's what we've had here. So. You know, it's uh, I, uh, more than anything. I'm glad our school got recognition. I'm glad our program got recognition because of the day. It comes right down to it. It's, it's still about the kids and oh, about yeah, the definitely. people that are around you. All right, coach. Well, congratulations on all of that. And uh, talk about. Let's go and let's jump right into the football game Friday night. Homecoming always a big deal in Charlton County. We had the parade two weekends ago with the Hokey Pinocchio Festival, the homecoming parade and everything in that. 2004 team came in here after the old field house. I'm sure their eyes were wide open when they walked in. They really were. I know my wife and, and of course, Miss Della Harden, who really, uh, her and Brian Hewlin organized everything, and Miss Della handled everything for us. And my wife was in here just to help out a little bit. Uh, she told me that some of those guys would, you know, of course, they come in and they are really in awe of what, our school has built here for us, but they're also a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say jealous, but they kind of had some <laughs> choice words to say about, uh -oh. about these guys are spoiled and I wish we'd have had this, this sort of stuff and everything. But, you know, it's, uh, this right here is all, you know, brick and concrete and mortar and, and all that, but it's what's in here, the, the people that have come through. And on this very spot, um, those players, those great players from the 2004 team, you know, Lemuel Walker, D Dwight Dasher, Caleb Giddens, and, and on and on, oh, DJ oh. Donnelly, you just, you just name it. Those guys, uh, you know, those guys, yeah, they were in a really bad facility, but they were some, sure some great, great football players. Oh, yeah. But again, we're proud of our facility, and they're proud of it too. They're yeah. proud, and, and I know a couple have made comments that says, well, it's teams like us that kept, you know, winning and kept, you know, uh, you know, and they're right. They're, they're exactly right. <laughs> well, in a sense, they built this. Yeah, in, in a real sense, they really did. Because if we had a bad program with bad players and 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 had had a bunch of losses, I'm sure that the community wouldn't be real interested in, in voting for a splash and and putting money towards facilities like this. So, you know, they're right. Uh, it's because of guys like that, that that the reason we're sitting in such a great facility right now. And it was. I didn't have a lot of time. I didn't have the time like I wanted because we had to get ready for a football game. Yeah. Uh, I had 68 guys in here. I had to make sure that we're ready. But I did kind of in passing see some of those guys. And then afterwards I got a chance to spend a little time with a few of them. But it was really great. You know, we have a meeting room over here to our, our left. Yes. And uh, it's a really it's a great meeting room. And I know Chris has installed as a speaker into our computer system. We had the, the 04 highlight film up on the big screen. Oh, and, yeah. And we had the state championship trophy in there, red and black table claws. And, and, and we had uh, uh, Robert Phillips, Robert Phillips, uh, whose, whose son Dusty played for us, Robert was out back back here with the grill smoking and we had uh, we had smoked chicken and sausages and, and oh, all man. kinds of sides but and gave them all t-shirts hats and state championship mugs and but again without people like Brian Hewling Robert Phillips and especially Della Harden who, mm -hmm. who really took upon herself to make sure everything in there was perfect and it was perfect uh, that wouldn't have been possible I had really nothing I had nothing to do with it just I was really consumed with trying to make sure we were ready to play Wilcox 
But again, seeing those guys, I wish I could have spent more time with them and, and we could have uh, talked about the good old days and, uh, and some of them just talked about the old days. There you go. Um, it would have been great, but I'm just glad they were here. It was great to see them walk in while we were in pregame and, and that sort of thing. So, Any uh, memories specifically with the guys? They were... Well, it's just, uh, it's just what kind of team they were and how much they cared for one another and about how their passion for the game. Those are the things that stick that stick out, and also those group of guys uh, really held each other responsible. Yeah. Um, if one guy was slacking, the rest of them were going to let him know, they and uh, they didn't tolerate a lot of uh, of people not carrying their weight. Yeah, they didn't, uh, and they were going to be prepared each and every week. Now, I'm on one point when I prepare for a game, I will work up our opponent in my mind mm-hmm. to where they're unbeatable. We just can't beat them. You know, I watch so much film on them, and I see all the great things they do, and I don't see necessarily the bad things they do. And that group right there, I'd tell them, uh, I'd always be warning them, you know, hey, if we're not ready, we're going to get our tails beat. And they just kind of look at me and grin. I can remember Dwight Dasher and Lemio especially. They just kind of shake their head, and they says, Coach, you know and we know we're not going to get beat. <laughs> and uh, they're right most of the time. We, we didn't get beat much. Uh, we won a, they, won, they won a pile of football games and some championships. Oh, yeah. And what a great group. And we're going to do it all over again next year, the 05 yeah, team next back. year. Then we'll do the 06 team the year after that. And then we'll have a little time off uh, until we, we start with the 99 uh, uh, team, I guess, and be in 2019. 20, 20, we'll, yes, sir. We'll, we'll have to bring them back. So. Uh, yeah, that's really really a great evening, and, and the fact that just the whole pageantry of homecoming, yeah. the excitement at, during the week, the, the pep rally, everything, all the activities at school that the kids do, the dress-up days and, and so forth, and and then, uh, of course, just coming out and winning the football game. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, was, a great, uh, was a great week. This was the first, if I'm not mistaken, this was the first homecoming that you weren't out on the field in the last... Two, two years. years. Two, two years. years. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, the last two years have, have been incredibly special for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just uh, being able to escort my oldest daughter, Darby, uh, across the field uh, has just been a, was an incredible experience. And there was even more pressure to at least know that we had a lead at halftime. That was, yeah. that was my whole concern the entire week because I... I, I, you know, I want to enjoy the experience of escorting my daughter across the field at homecoming mm-hmm. and not sit there and be staring out of the corner of my eye at a scoreboard where we're behind at halftime and yeah. wonder what adjustments are being done. So there was pressure all week long uh, that we, we must go in at halftime with a lead, and we always did uh, the two times. So we always had at least a two-touchdown lead, so I was able to at least enjoy Somewhat of that. So you, you uh, weren't walking across the field with her, going, "I've got to get back." I got to really, I've got to get back to work here, <laughs> uh, type thing. And, and I always, I always told her, I said, you know, if you want now, I can, you know, real quick throw a suit jacket on or something like that, to look like all the other dads. And she always told me, she goes, "I don't want you to look like all the other dads. I want there you, you to look like my dad, the coach." You know. And so she goes, just, awesome. "Just, just wear what you got on, because that's the way I want you." And, and I said, "Sounds good to me, because I'm not a big." jacket guy anyway <laughs> um so that was really special homecoming at charlton county is a special thing it is. um we, we do have kids who make it back when it falls on the festival that's even bigger, it's a bigger we don't event. have a lot of control of when homecoming always is whether it falls on festival it's, it's always close to festival time and it's really great when it does fall on that that friday before festival so, uh, uh, but anyway, it was just a great week. Uh, I think a lot of the kids had a good time, which oh, is yeah. what's important. And, uh, you know, and the game worked out just fine for us, so it was really good. It, it always makes it nice to put a big it, W up there on home. It, it sure does. Well, let's just jump into the game real quick, Coach. Okay. Um, from up top, you know, from our vantage point, I thought uh, Andrew Lee, while he was in there, I th- did, what happened with Andrew? Well, Andrew Lee, coming out of the Irwin County game, was nicked up, uh, had an ankle problem, and it, it was slow coming around. And he felt like, Andrew felt like, he convinced us that, that he was fine, he can go. I didn't know if he's going to be able to go this game. And then once we got him in, he did, it did flare up on him. So we tried to get him out as quickly as we could right. uh, with him. But then we turned to uh, Devin Hannons, uh, and Devin hit, hit, he uh, he hit the hole hard. He, he really just... You know, his skill set at running back, what he brings to the running back position is you tell him where to go and he's going to hit it as hard as he can. And we love that about him. 
And, of course, he does a great job on defense. And then Eric Daniels, a freshman, you know, we put him at the end. And I think he may have the best vision of all three of these guys as far as he sees yeah, yeah, seeing things better and being able to cut back to a hole or bounce it to a hole. So uh, this week, you know, we, we expect Andrew Lee to be ready and, and full speed and ready to go. But if not, we do have a lot of confidence in uh, Devin Hannons and Eric Daniels. We think both those guys can run, you know, get the job done and run for over 100 yards or whatever we need them to do in th- this game next week. You know, coming up, well, we're going to talk about Wilcox still for a little bit. But talking about the game next week, Telfair County, they come in at 5-2, and 2-2 two, two and two in the region. On uh, the defensive side, Mookie, Mookie Smith, he had a huge hit. Yeah, Mookie is just, if you really go back and have a chance to, to, to watch the film, watching the game live, you may not get to see the impact that Mookie had on the game. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but if you go back and watch the film, Mookie is our, our player of the week. And he may have only had three tackles and a sack, which, which is okay for a nose guard position. But the way he, he dominated the line of scrimmage, the way he was able to really cut the offense in half by driving the center back when they wanted to pull their backside guard or tackle, they weren't able to get across because Mookie had the center four or five yards deep in the back <laughs> every half the time. So uh, the other coaches just rant and rave about the job he's doing. Of course, we'd love to have, <clears throat> we'd love to have Michael Dasher back. We'd love to have both those guys on there. Oh, yeah. But uh, Mookie has stepped up his game. He is playing tremendous. He's just a sophomore. And I, I can't say enough about the job he's doing. And also on the defensive line, you might have noticed we took Levi Cribb and put him in for about, uh, I think, two series. Mm-hmm. And Levi did a really, really good job. And he's somebody that we're probably going to end up playing a little bit more on defensive line because really? just, just he's, he's big, he can run well, he's a smart kid, he does a good job. So... So if we look for that to, for him to be added. And I know you have down Anthony Jackson. Anthony Jackson, we have we have two players of the game. We have a, a the player of the game, which is the Burger King player of the game. Who right. Tomorrow gets to get his picture taken and gets to eat dinner uh, over there. And then the other one, we have what we call our, our brother Ray's player of the game. Brother Ray McMillan uh, feeds uh, two players that he oh, yeah. made for players of the game. Anthony Jackson was our other one. Anthony led the team in tackles. He leads our, for the game, he leads our team in tackles for the season. He had 12 yeah. tackles all over the field. I, I mean, know. the kid's six That's foot four. That's why I wrote his name down. Hey, six foot four, about 215 pounds, an athlete. And I tell you what, both those guys, Mookie and Anthony, are two of my favorite kids. Uh, they're, they're awesome kids. They're team guys. And, and they're just, uh, and of course, defensively. Uh, and again, if you watch the film, you might be saying, you know, our scheme might look unusual a little bit, but there are certain things we knew we had to shut down in order to win the football game. I know there were some deep passes that were thrown that the guy was somewhat open. A couple of times he looked a little open. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, that was somewhat by design. We were hoping that we would have done a better job on that. But we needed to stop the running game first. We knew if we stopped the running game, forced them to throw the ball. We didn't think their quarterback had the kind of accuracy right. that we wasn't really con- as consistent as maybe we've seen in the past. So. Uh, we felt like playing some of an unsound look was going to be to our benefit, and we got away with it with a shutout. So obviously, oh yeah, well, obviously it worked out for us. Obviously, you guys knew what you were doing. Yeah. The uh, was the uh, the quarterback was definitely on those deep balls a couple of times. I thought the young man, the uh, was number one, I believe it was number one, mm-hmm. just appeared to us to be wide open a few times. And like you said, you weren't real confident with his accuracy, and, and he yeah. was off. Well, and I'll tell you another thing about Wilcox. Wilcox is extremely athletic. Every player on the field, even the big guys. The big guys were huge. I mean, they had an offensive, defensive lineman, that, you know, 6'2", 315-pound guy that can run. Uh, very, very big on the offensive, defensive line. All their kids, all their skilled kids can fly. Yeah. Much more athletic than we were. So I, we really talked about our kids about being in the right place, taking the correct angles, knowing what the call was, and we really had to do that in order not to be out of position to get scored on by these guys because they are very, very athletic. So I'm real pleased with our defense to hang in there uh, and not get scored on, which is always huge. But, but uh, again, uh, shut out of homecoming. Shut out homecoming, and that's, that's great. And, of course, uh, that means we had to go ahead and get them zero candy bars for another shutout. <laughs> All right. Coach, we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back with our senior spotlight, and we have a special guest tonight, Coach Baxter. The uh, Maidens are hosting the first-ever state playoff game here at home. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what, we're excited about that. I know a lot of our football players uh, are excited about getting over there Wednesday. I told them, I said, I guarantee you, uh, we're going to be done in time to be there because I want to see it too. Uh, yeah, i tell you what, the, the, you know, the best football coach we may have, or best coach we may have in our school is Coach Baxter. And uh, he was he coached football with me, and he was the best coach I ever had. And, and uh, he's really got the baseball program where it is. He's got the softball program now where it is. And, uh, you know, my daughter had a chance to play for him, which was really great. And, and I tell you, I'm, I'm excited about this. I really oh, yeah. am because um, I've known a lot of these girls since they've been very young, uh, been friends with my daughter. And, and Wednesday, I'm telling you, everybody needs to be over there Wednesday at 5 o'clock because it's going to be a, it's going to be real exciting. It's going to be a special day for us to bring uh, playoff softball to folks in Georgia. And the awesome thing about it is they're young. That's right. They're young. They'll be, doing it, they'll be doing it again next That's year. That's right. All right, Coach. Our senior spotlight when we come back? Sure. Devontae Nash. Devontae Nash. All right. We'll be right back after this message. The Folkestone Pharmacy, your original hometown pharmacy for over 45 years, is a proud sponsor of Charlton Sportsnet broadcasts. Folkestone Pharmacy accepts insurance from most local employers, including the City of Folkestone, Charlton County, Babcock & Wilcox, AJM, Charlton Memorial Hospital, and many others. The Folkestone Pharmacy wishes the Indians best of luck this season. All right, welcome back to our Senior Spotlight and the Coach Mack Show. Coach, uh, Cavante Nash, number 17. You know, Cavante Nash, this has really been his first full year with us. Uh, you know, Cavante, uh, he's, he's really a great kid, and he's a kid that's had a uh, had a lot of growing up to do throughout his, his high school years and junior high years, but we're really proud of him right now. Uh, right now, he's just doing a super job, number one over at the high school and the classrooms uh, and just in our, our school community. So that's the number one thing I'm, I'm really pleased with Cavante about. But Cavante, you know, who's the son of, of, of Miss Pollock and, and, and Mr. Will Pollock, uh, I tell you, they uh, he is really – brought a lot of enthusiasm to our football team right now because because of the struggles he had early in his football career and, and different things. He right now probably appreciates this season more than anybody. Yeah, he's enjoying it. He really is enjoying it. He's a two-way starter right now for us. Starts at defensive back and doing a great job there. And, of course, he's turned into right now possibly our best wide receiver. Uh, he's probably five foot 11, 200 pounds, can really run. And, and at wide receiver, you probably you saw the last few weeks, he's been our true deep threat. He's been the guy that they've been putting their best defensive back on, and he's still been able to make plays. So, you know, Cavante, you know, he's just, uh, you know, he's, he's a kid that, that we knew with his athleticism, if we can ever get him focused in on this program and get him focused in on what we're trying to get done over at the high school, that he could really help be an us, asset. and he is—he has gotten there. He has really grown up. He's matured. Uh, uh, I, I know his mother and father's got to be proud of him right oh, now yeah. because you know his grades have turned around, and I know his attitude is fantastic, and his work ethic is really, really good, and he's also displaying a lot of leadership qualities. I know last week he really spoke up at the end of practice, and he just wanted to tell the team, you know, he goes, "Listen, I just want to tell you all, this game's really important to me." Yeah. Which, yeah, it's important to all of us. And I asked him why, and I said, hey, why, why is this game so much more important? He goes, well, this is going to be the first game my grandmother's ever going to come see me play. There you and go. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, we've got to get the ball to you, don't we? And he said, yes, sir. No so, and we got the ball to him a couple times deep, and he did a great job. And I know he enjoyed the whole night. It was a special night for him being, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, family was able to come in and see him. So in high school sport, that's what it's really all about. Right. When you can share experiences not only with the, the players and the players' family, and see them do things that they really set out to do and, and meet their goals, which, you know, Cavante's goals this year was really just be a, be a real positive member of this football team, and he's done that. So I can't say enough about, you know, what Cavante Nash has done for this football team. And, and, and for itself. And for itself, really. I think this year he has set himself up to hopefully have a real positive life and do some really good things with it. So, and again, that's what high school athletes, athletics, you know, everybody focuses on the winning and, and, mm -hmm. and that, sort, that sort of thing. But really, more than anything, this is what we're here for, is for guys like this, to, to really help them become better people and, and really try to help point them in the right direction. And I'm, I'm proud of him, and I'm proud of the program as being able to help, help Cavante to this point. 
All right. Does he have a? Uh, I know we've kind of harped on the food choices a little bit. Does he have an unusual food choice? Well, I won't there? be eating with him very anytime soon because he likes hot wings and anything <laughs> hotter than ketchup. I can't hardly stand. But I mean, but I will. But I will watch Sports Center with him because that's his favorite show. But but again, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, the hot wings. It, yeah, I forget about the hot wings. He can have that. But it's it's always a lot of fun to. Uh, uh, talk. We talk about these guys uh, in this in this program that Glenn Hughes puts together every year, you know. And again, I I, I really got to call these guys out on their favorite subject. I don't know whose favorite subject would really be math, but it seems like all these guys want to say their favorite subject's math. But I think they got together beforehand. But and they, just, or they're trying to impress somebody. Maybe that that's that they're trying to impress somebody that they like math. I mean, I'm just going to tell you flat out, I don't like math, so <laughs> I ain't going to try to impress you. <laughs> all right, coach. Well, we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about. We're going to have Coach Baxter on with the uh, talk, discuss softball in the playoffs, the maidens, and then we'll come back with you, Coach Mac, and talk about Telfair County. Sure. We'll be right back. Okie Finoki Rural Electric Membership Corporation offers more than dependable electrical energy at a competitive price. Quality service is provided by a friendly and professional staff trained to meet your every electrical power need, whether residential, commercial, or industrial. If you have any questions or need information, call us at 1-800-262-5131. Okefenokee REMC, owned by those we serve. A proud sponsor of this year's Indian Football Broadcast. All right, welcome back to the Coach Mack Show. I have a special guest with us tonight. Uh, Coach Baxter of the Charlotte County Maidens. You've made the playoffs the last several years straight. This is the first time Charlton County will be hosting softball playoffs here in here in overall Maiden Field. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, we set a record this year with our 19th win. Uh, last year we had 18. Um, we tied for the region, and uh, Wilcox won the tiebreaker and in. The clinch game keeps haunting me because we were there and played flat and we had 11 walks, five errors, and we couldn't bow back. And that one loss kept it from the 20. Yeah, it kept us from 20. And plus, it kept us region play, uh, region champion. You know, at the Wilcox game, the first time we went to Wilcox, uh, it was neck and neck. And uh, we finally went up two runs in the top of the seventh. And... Uh, had base loaded two outs, and they uh, they tied it up, and uh, we had an error, and they walk off error, won that game. So, you know, every game we've been in this just year, a couple of little things, can just a couple of things. I mean, that's the way the game, you know, that's the way the game's played, and, and the team that executes, you know, comes on top. Yeah. You know, we'll talk about. The region, the region was kind of tough. You know, we had some teams that struggled early in the year. Um, but you take the top four. They're, they're in the tournament. They're in the tournament. You know, Telfair, was, you know, we got Telfair here, first time ever, state playoffs. That's awesome. Awesome. We you know, hope, have a great crowd. And, and the kids and the girls deserve it. You know, they've been put up with me since July. And that's hard to do with, you know. Um, Played over summer, um, played 28, 26 games, um, and I'm proud of them because, you know, these girls, people don't realize they got to battle cheerleading, uh-huh. and they got to deal with the band. They have a lot going on. They have a lot of things going on. And plus, they got to deal with me and playing softball in the and correct way. And we practice. We work hard. There's not a night uh, you can't dr- drive by over there and the lights aren't on or they're not on the field. So. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm extremely proud. You know, this team right here, knock on wood, it's, it's one of those teams you love to coach. Oh, yeah. They're solid. They love to coach because they'll do things for you and, and they don't question it. And, you know, there might be not – we have some kids that can't do it, but they cheat. They keep working at it, you know, certain skills. We tell them, work on your skills, work on your skills. Um, and you see them, and it's work in progress, you know. And I, I'm extremely proud. And I wouldn't ever trade this team for nobody. It's a great team. Let's, let's dive into Telfair a little bit, Coach. You, you swept them this year. First time handily, 10-2. to two. Second time a little bit closer, 4-3. Four to, four to three. Yeah, I know, and that's what scares me about this, this series. Maybe our girls can 
can come out on fire. First time we played, we beat them ten two. We scored eight runs first inning. We just I don't know what it was. Uh, I told Marshman, memorize that speech you told him. Do it again. Do it again. Uh, <laughs> we jumped out eight nothing and and uh, played solid defense. And uh, with two strikes, that's the key. With two strikes, and got him only give up two runs. And we run rule. It was fifth inning when they called it. Uh, second time we played them, they jumped out three nothing. First inning, we made one costly error. Uh, toward the bottom of six, we got a little rally going, and and one of their players made a costly error, and, and we go ahead and run, score from second base, and next inning we just held them four three. You know. That one was here, wasn't it? That was here. That was here. We carried that game. Out. And uh, those kind of games, you know, people realize you can't replicate that pressure situation where you need to perform. Yeah. It's a tight situation. And, you know, it's like in football. you got to perform that kind of situation. You can't do it at practice. There's no way you can replicate that. Yeah. You know, you can't the put pressure, the city girls the fans, situation, the situation, friends, the, whole the atmosphere, the time of the, of the game. Um, but hopefully we had some few close games this year. We we've, we've pulled them out, and uh, and we've had a few games where we didn't pull them out. So hopefully that that, that close knit games will pay off, and hopefully we can get by a tail fair and go to Columbus. Which I tell the girls right off the bat this this year, uh, our goal was to go to Columbus. Yeah. Our goal was not to go to re- win the region, which would be nice, but we want to go to Columbus. And if every coach I've talked to is just a great atmosphere, and it's kind of like they play at the Olympic Park. Mm-hmm. It was made for the Olympics in '96, and, they, and it's just an awesome venue. And they do it like a it's a weekend tournament. Weekend tournament. Weekend tournament. Double nation. The girls definitely following you around, coach. The girls are definitely used to weekend tournaments. Yeah, they are. So they're they're conditioned to that. Yeah. You guys, you guys, you know, be ready. You have 48 teams there, and they they march in just like the Olympics. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that's, that's awesome. That's a great, that awesome. Everything, I just want to be there. And I hope these girls, we can pull it out Wednesday night. Well, the, uh, well, the, the, what I was thinking with the game with the tail fair, the second one, the 4-3 to three game, I think, that, to me, that almost works in your favor because they won't take tail fair lightly. They know tail fair can play ball with them. True. You know, so, I mean, it won't be that, you know, that situation where you come in, oh, we've swept them, we're looking forward to, you know, looking ahead, God forbid, you know, to the next round. That's very much true. Uh, yeah, because I, I don't think our girls are underestimating them. Uh, they're ready for them. Uh, it's, it's just the process of we've got to throw strikes, play defense, get some timely hits, and don't make mistakes on the bases, and, and put you know, and just play the ball. And just have fun and play ball. Home. Have fun. Right. Relax. All right? Uh, let me, well, let me do, do the, the stressing. Let me do the stressing. I, I'm used to that. We've never seen that, Coach. We've never seen you stress. Cool hand, Luke. <laughs> coach, I highlighted some young ladies I, I thought you might want to talk about, and then obviously anybody else you would like to, to mention. Um, number 25, Allie Bennett, your catcher. Allie Bennett's been my starting catcher since uh, freshman year. She, uh, think about Allie, Allie's on. Allie's got all the heart in the world, mm-hmm. and she's going to work at it, and she's going to Continue to do what we're telling her to do. Uh, she had a off year, hitting wise. Um, she batted 208 to finish the season out. And the thing about Allie, uh, she was first team All Region last year. Yeah. And I think she was first team All Region freshman year. And she got honorable mention this year. And hopefully, you know, that will motivate her. Motivate her. Get it, you know, go back to first team next year. But you know. Allie's super kid. Oh, yeah. Great athlete. Great parents. Great parents. Uh, so you get a lot got, of support there. She's got two sisters playing with us, uh, Tessa and Lexi. Um, we just yeah. hope, hopefully Allie will catch on fire during the playoffs. That's what we're waiting on. Because you know she's going to hit. Oh, yeah. She and the thing about her, she's one. hitting the ball hard, but she's hitting it right at people. Um, we made a few adjustments with her swing, and um, hopefully she'll go up there and relax and, and hit it hard. I wanted to ask you about that before we go to the other young ladies. Do you make adjustments specifically for playoffs, or do you treat it just like regular season? If they're swinging well, we leave them alone. If they're, my thing is, 
our girls, good hitters, need to hit over 400, around the 400, 500 range. A good high school hitter. Mm-hmm. If they're below that, we've got we to tweak it. Got to mess with it. Got to mess with it. Go back to basics. And uh, we've been doing that. We did it a little bit on Sunday. Uh, we had an optional hitting practice. Most of the girls showed up. And uh, I didn't realize you had optional. I figured everything was mandatory and be here. <laughs> well, they just they know what to do. <laughs> here you go. I'm just messing with you. Uh, next one, number 13, Carly Hooker. Carly, uh, you know, last year she started out hot. She she was a 400 hitter, and she broke her ankle in Bakington, uh, and then she had to sit out the rest of the year. And she she's getting back into it. We've made adjustments with her. Uh, her speed's great. Uh-huh. She's very she, fast on the bases. Yes, we need we need to get her on base. She needs to get on base, whatever it takes. Uh-huh. And you know, um, outfield she's doing better there. She's fast and out there. We need her to catch fly balls, and uh, she's a team leader. Is she? Yep. She, she likes to lead. Oh, number 11, your daughter, Mary Baxter, having a phenomenal year at shortstop. Um, Mary got, uh, this is the first time I've ever been to a region meet where we had to vote, and we come up to, after the pitch of the year, we came up to uh, the uh, defensive player of the year, and I had a coach. Raise his hand. I didn't. I didn't think about Mary, but Mary, to my, I mean, I'm, I'm I judgmental. Mean, you think a little different. Yeah, I saw some errors that she should have not have, but overall, I mean, she made some great plays this year. She you makes know. some fantastic plays. Um, but the coach said, "I want to nominate a player," and I was thinking he was nominate her player, his player. He said, "I don't want to nominate Mary Baxter." Okay, surprised me. Took yeah. me and I've never seen that before. And now all nine coaches seconded. So Mary got defensive player of the year. Congratulations. Um, Callan Carter got first team all region. Yeah. She, um, she was my next one. My center fielder. Um, she batted over 400. Great speed. Lightning speed. We need yeah. her to hit. Over 400 is nice. Yes. Nice. Um, Callan Wainwright won 19 games. She got first team all region. She had a big game recently, I remember, or it was an away game. Chris Beasley posted it on our site. She had a huge game on the mound. It's probably against Eccles. Eccles? Nothing. Eccles County? Eccles, um, awesome game. One of the best games we play all year. Yeah. Um, great defense. Uh, we made two errors, but those errors didn't hurt us. You know, the errors that hurt you when they score runs, that's the ones that hurt. Yeah. Um, Make an error, keep them on base, get out of it. Callie got in the groove, and she was throwing, throwing strikes, and we had we was up 2 nothing, and we went to the bottom of the Degum 7th in, in Statenville, and Statenville had a big crowd there, and they had flags, beat Charlton, and they wanted this really bad. Yeah. Um, we had a great scenario. We had number 7, 8, 9 coming into the bottom of the 7th. And uh, <laughs> Callie walks that first batter. Uh-oh. And uh, we didn't want to get number 1. So we got that situation where we had a ground ball to Carly Giddens, one hop, step on the bag, ball game. It was a good game. That was one of the best games we've played all year. Congratulations. I, I know you were uh, sweating a little bit. She, she walks the first batter. You know, you've got the number one top spot coming up if it works yeah, out. Yes. That was a tight situation. So, one of those uh, pressure things. And Carly Giddens, big play, step yeah. on the bag. Uh, she got second team all region. And she's done a great job. Uh, I put her in a bad spot in Bakington, and uh, we struggled at first third base all year to that point. And I had one of my little tirades, and, and I said, no. Carla Giddens, <laughs> you're playing third base whether you like it or not. There you go. And uh, she stayed there the whole year. You know, and I, Carla Giddens, very, good. very coachable. Well, they're all, they've been around you forever. I mean, you're an icon around here on the diamond. You've been, I mean, the kids from here on up. They've all been through your program. Yeah, that, it's, it's been fun. It's been I'll bet it fun has. watching those kids grow up and become ball players. You'll be coaching. You'll be coaching your grandkids in, in a few years yeah. one day, huh? I don't know about that. <laughs> not know. rushing that, coach. No, I'm not rushing that. Not, not rushing that. All right. Assuming, assuming we get it, because I know, I know you're, you have a love, a love affair with Wilcox County. How, um, we get through tail fair. What are we looking at with Wilcox? You get through tail fair and uh I know you don't like looking ahead, but this is me being Yeah, I know, I know. Me being me. Wilcox, um 
Sam. They're, they got a lot of game experience because if most of those girls play travel ball, mm-hmm. and they're they're kind of young, they're just freshmen, sophomores, and a few juniors. Um, we've been to every game with them. Um, well coached, and you know if we get by Telfair, that's the first I know oh, we'll yeah. probably face them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Too. We're looking yeah. at the brackets; they're playing a 16 seed. Yeah, playing so. Miller County, and we beat Miller County over in Bacon. And we beat them 8-1. So they're not bad, but, you know, crazy things have happened. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've seen number ones fall. Yeah. You have. Over on the baseball field and. Coach uh, Wilcox, good guy. Me and him become friends. And, uh, now, the reason I said the love affair, the games are so close. Yes. I mean, both of them, they were regrettably two losses, but, I mean, three runs combined. Yeah. You know, play here, play there, and stay the way around. It's all about that execution. Costly errors. And in every game, you look at that, um, we had errors that cost us. You know, and I told my girls, you know, our approach to Telfair this week is, is, is go out there with domination and have fun having domination. We don't want them to have first base. We, will deny, we want them to deny them first base. Sweet All points right. to be done with. Yeah. If they get first base, just don't give them second. If they get second base, just don't give them third. You know, go to... In sequence. Right. But we've got to have that mentality where we don't want to give them nothing. Nothing's free. And if you had that mentality, and all nine girls, mm-hmm. and all 15 girls in the dugout, whatever, we had that mentality, I think we'll be successful. First pitch, 5 o'clock? First pitch, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, double header. Double header. That's, That's two out of three That's series. two out of three. And we're, if we won't, you know, just, just win this thing. And we'll be carrying both games live on charltonsportsnet.com. Uh, the link, Chris Beasley generally has, well, not generally, always has our game links on our Facebook page. So go to like Charlton Sportsnet on Facebook. Watch the game live. If you're out of town, if you're in town, we want you at the stadium. Yeah. We want you over there at the stadium. If you're out of town, check us out. Watch it online. Support the girls. Coach, I appreciate you joining us on such short notice. I know it was like a phone call an hour ago. I appreciate it, and good luck Wednesday. Thank you very much. All right. We'll be right back with the remainder of the Coach Mack Show. We're going to discuss their game with Telfair County Friday night, and we'll be right back. Anytime Fitness Folkestone, located in the Harvey Shopping Center, has everything you need to stay in shape or get that look you've always wanted. Upright at conventional tanning beds, a Zumba room, weight room, and state-of-the-art treadmills. They also have supplements and tanning supplies. Anytime Fitness Folkestone is also the proud sponsor of Charlton Sports Weekly with Glenn Hughes and Stan Wilds. See Stan to get fit anytime. All right, welcome back to the Coach Max Show. I want to thank Coach Baxter for joining us in the previous segment, Coach, discussing some maiden softball. First time ever a state playoff game for softball will be held here. Wednesday afternoon, 5 o'clock, Telfair County, doubleheader. So y'all make sure you get over there and pack Maiden Field for that. All right, Coach, let's dive into Tel. It's unusual, kind of a coincidence. Telfair County again. We have them Wednesday in softball, Friday night in football. That's right. And uh, a couple of the girls are down in the weight room. They say we just need to dominate Telfair this whole week. The whole week. And it sounds good to me. Hopefully that happens. You know, Telfair brings in a, a, a really good athletic football team. They throw the ball well. They're a little bit like us in that they they will mix it up. They will throw the ball, run the ball pretty much evenly. Um, coming out of the open week, we saw film on them, and they have went and they're running a lot of jet sweep, really stretching the field sideways on us. And that's something that we've had a little bit of trouble with. So today, I know Coach Woods with the defense spent a lot of time making sure that we can handle their jet sweeps and then anything bringing up underneath. Uh, like I said, they're in good position for a playoff spot for football, yeah. being 5-2 and two overall. I know they're in the power rankings right now in pretty good shape. So, and I, like I told the players also today, understand, we've been over there two other times and we've lost. We yeah. lost a playoff game there a long time ago, and I believe is uh, two years ago we two went over ago. there and we lost a game, we lost it big. And I explained to the kids, the week of Telfair, we had no idea in our minds that this could happen. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then we get over there with the mindset, well, it's Telfair, we're just going to, 
we're just going to do, we're going to do, do, we're gonna do our thing. And I'll tell you, we went over there and we got our tails kicked pretty bad. Uh, we got a beat light by at least 30 points, maybe more. I might have been a run a clock at the end. But, again, I explained to him, I said, this is a good football team. They've got athletes on their team that are better athletes than what we have. Uh, they throw the ball very well. They run the ball very well. They're big and, and very athletic on the offensive and defensive line. They're really a team that's equally as good, maybe better than a uh, Wilcox football team. So it's, it's going to be a game that I hope our kids are focused. Uh, I know they're still excited about the win Friday, and it was, a, oh, yeah. it was a great night. I mean, it really was, and I don't want to take that away from them, but it's time to, time to get them refocused, and it's time to get ready to play uh, uh, this, this our third from our last football game. We've yeah. got to, and we've got to get this one. If we get this one, then we could start saying, you know, we're starting to sit good for playoffs, and hopefully right. we'll have a playoff, home playoff game this year. So uh, the big thing this week is for us to get adjusted to what they do. Uh, defensively, they're very multiple, very athletic. Offense, they're in the gun almost all the time, and uh, they will throw it. They have some inside receivers that are very, very good. Um, they'll run your jet, jet sweeps, uh, and they'll also bring the ball inside with a very tough – Tough running back who I think is near also a thousand yards on the year, so it's a game we've got to be ready for. It's yeah. a long trip, you know, not not long for Charlton County standards, well, we're, but we're, we're it's to... uh, yeah, it's it's two hours away. But uh, that's a home game. Coach. You know, we need to we need to have a great week. We need to have a great week of practice, and we need to, uh, the guys that we have dinged up, and we do have some guys dinged up. But well, like I told them Friday, at this point in the season, if you're been, if you've been playing football, you. You should be dinged up. We yeah. should all have something wrong with his uh, sore knee, sore ankle, sore shoulder, whatever. And, and we've got to learn to deal with that. And we've got to learn to, to heal up enough during the week where we can go put it out there again on Friday and, and, and play a great football game. So right now that's what we're, we're getting adjusted, getting everybody focused, and trying to get healthy to where we can have the people we need on the field come Friday versus, uh, versus Telfair. Is there a player on the Telfair side that uh... – Maybe your defense is specifically looking for? Is there a standout? Or? Well, they do have some standouts. Like I said, the tailback, number 33, is outstanding. The quarterback is very accurate with the ball. They have a wide receiver, number one, who we've seen make catches all over the field. Uh -huh. They have a lot of skilled guys that look alike, like Wilcox. They had yeah. a lot of guys that were out there, 5'11", 6-foot kids, look like 180, 190-pound guys that can just fly. They have a lot of guys like that. Wilcox's coaching staff, I think this is their third year there, maybe maybe the third or fourth year there, and one thing they've done a great job at is strength training and also getting kids out for football. So it's a, it's a playoff program. They're playoff ready. It's, it's time for Telfair to be in the playoffs. It's time for them to possibly win some playoff games, and, and so we've got to be ready when we make that trip to McCray uh, this Friday. I hope everybody. Went, well, I hope we want everybody to come along with us. Charlton always travels well. The band, the band will be showing off again as usual. Yeah. Cheerleaders, the whole, the whole That's atmosphere. Right. That's right, exactly. And uh, you know, this Thursday we have a B team game uh, right here at home versus Pierce, Pierce County. County. Our last B team game at home. We have this one, then we're in Waycross now. Hopefully the, the softball team is just going to win two games Wednesday and be done with it. Uh, have that out but, of if the way. They, but if they do split on, uh, I know Coach Baxter probably talked about it, but if they do, of course, if they do split, then they're going to play on Thursday afternoon. And, what, you know, and, and we can't do much about the B team game. We're probably still going to have it. But I'll tell you all, go, go spend your money over at the softball field. Go, go watch Sport those. The girls. I mean, yeah, because I mean, that's, to be honest with you, I've already told Coach Murray, I said, you're going to have to handle this thing Thursday because if our girls are playing for a chance to advance, I'm probably going to be over there, just to be honest with you. So, um, you know, we're going to – we're – we're as excited about what's going on over here on Wednesday and as what's going to be happening this Friday. So uh, we look forward to a great week, another great week, back-to-back -back great weeks at Charlton County High School. All right. All right, Coach, well, I appreciate you joining us, and we'll see you, uh, we'll probably see you at the Maidens game. Yeah, but definitely. definitely Friday night over in Telfair County. That'd be great. Look forward to seeing everybody in McCray, Georgia.